Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Welcome to this edition of Two Anatomy Geeks. Today, well, I'm one anatomy geek. Jill, get out here. We're talking about the glute max. What's up? Hi! <laughs> Second anatomy geek. So, so many of our clients come to us with hip issues and we hear things like the glutes are weak and the hip flexors are short and tight. Last week we discussed the psoas. Today we're, we're going to turn our attention to the glute. Jill will tell us about the glute max, where it attaches to, and what it does. All right, so the glute maximus um, is a, it's the largest muscle back here on the uh, buttocks area, and um, it is going to uh, have a nice um, oblique or diagonal fiber direction, all right, which makes it a lot different from some of the other muscles that are in this area. Um, its origin, it has a lot of origins to it. So it is going to um, be attaching at the coccyx, the lateral aspects of the coccyx. Um, then it comes up here to the lateral aspect of the um, sacrum. And then it swoops all the way up here and it takes up a little bit of this posterior iliac crest. So it has this kind of fiber um, attachment, kind of like a nice V shape as it comes down. Now what it's gonna do then is it is going to um, swoop out and attach to the femur. But when it attaches to the femur, it has a really tiny, tiny little insertion area that's gonna be called the gluteal tuberosity, which I'm just gonna show on here. Gluteal tuberosity isn't really a place that is easy to palpate. It's not like the greater trochanter, it's not big, um, but it is a tiny little like a uh, bony landmark that is just on the superior aspect of the linea aspera, so right about here. But what I like to use when I'm trying to kind of visualize the insertion of um, the glute maximus is that it does have a very large insertion also at the IT band, which is that kind of big batch of what I think about as like fascial masking tape that goes all the way down the lateral aspect of the thigh. So it's fiber direction is going to be like this and I'm going to show it on Dr. Osar here and I'm going to use the band and what I'm going to do is think about palpating um, that lateral aspect of the sacrum that posterior iliac crest and then swooping it down to that IT band so this is going to be and you can see those diagonal fiber directions that's going to be that fiber direction of that gluteus maximus so one of the big actions at the hip that we talk about here is how the glute maximus is a external rotator of that hip joint. And Dr. Osar will talk a little bit more about that. So we've heard that the glute max is primary a hip extender, which it is. And as Jill discussed, it's also an external rotator. However, we wanna think about what it does when our foot is on the ground, because yes, it will help propel our body forward, which is our hip extension function, mm -hmm. But it, what it also does from a rotation standpoint is it helps to control what's happening through the lower extremity as we start to load or put our weight onto one leg. So for a lot of our clients, what happens is they struggle with balance issues. So what happens if you face that way, if you don't mind? So I'm gonna lift your shirt up if you don't mind, yep. is a lot of our clients have a non-optimal strategy for standing on one leg, for walking, for balance. So what they tend to do is they'll start to over grip, so squeeze your glutes here. They'll over squeeze their glutes and that will start to change how well they rotate. So what often happens is if one side is, is of the glutes are excessively tight, along with those external hip rotators like the piriformis, we'll talk more about that at a different time, it will start to rotate your pelvis away from that side. So for example, if Jill, if you want to step back towards me just a little bit, step forward with your left leg. And now if she's stepping forward onto her left leg as if she's walking and these glutes are tight, which they are on a lot of our clients for a variety of reasons. Number one, they don't use them very well because we're sitting on them all day. And another, re re another reason why is because of spinal stenosis that will tuck the pelvis into posterior tilt that will also shorten the glutes. What the glutes will start to do is rotate that pelvis away from the forward leg and not allow for internal rotation because remember, the glute's an external rotator. So if the glute is short and tight, which it is on a lot of our clients, we'll start to lose the ability to internally rotate the pelvis towards that forward leg. So because we lose a lot of hip mobility, because we have a tight butt, too much gripping from the posterior hip complex, one of the exercises we'll use is the hip hinge and also the split stance hip hinge. So here's how we set our clients up for a split stance hip hinge. 
we will already have talked about in the hip hinge, but this is more specific to one side glute tightness. So if you can stand that way again, I'm gonna teach my client how to keep her nice long spine so Jill will feel as if she's being pulled up that direction. She's gonna stack her rib cage over top of her pelvis and place her hands upon her pelvis. What I want Jill to do now is to keep her pelvis squared forward, facing that direction, squared forward and facing the direction of her foot. She's gonna step back with her right foot, keeping her weight on her left foot. So again, she's gonna keep the majority of her weight on her left hip because we wanna release this left hip. So she's gonna breathe in and as she breathes out, she's gonna hinge forward, keeping a nice long spine position. And if she's doing this well, stop right there, just lengthen out through your spine now. Yeah, there you go, nice. She should feel it, where do you feel it, Jill? Right here. Exactly, they should feel the stretch in their gluteal complex of that forward hip because now we're keeping that pelvis square or neutral which is relative internal rotation for those people that have tight external rotators like the glute max. This should, she'll breathe in to come back upright using the glute because the glute will, is a hip extender, that's the hip extension component. Now she'll, she'll do anterior pelvic rotation again, that hip hinge motion again, which will stretch out that glute and those posterior external, or I should say the external hip rotators and that posterior fascia. So that way again, every single repetition, she should feel it right there in her glutes, not in her low back, and then come back up to the upright position and do that one more time. Great exercise to teach your clients how to release and lengthen the glute max, but also teach the glute max how to control this position right here. So what we don't want to see our clients do is rotate away. That's that external rotation from tight glutes and tight external hip rotators. We want to make sure our client stays squared up to the forward leg, to the forward foot, and then come back up. Very nice pattern for helping our clients release and also activate the glutes in the right manner and train the glutes to control the pelvis as well as rotation of the lower extremity. So I hope that made sense and it helped explain the glute max and really one of the primary functions of glute max, like we said, is not only hip extension, but to control that pelvis relative to the lower extremity and to really focus on controlling as we're moving into single leg stance or that single leg support that we need when we're walking, balancing and doing exercises that require us to balance on one leg. So Jill, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. It's fun Olson. as always. Always we'll fun. We'll see you next week for part well, in the next part, which we'll talk about, the di I think diaphragm. diaphragm. Right? We're actually gonna talk about the diaphragm and why the diaphragm is an important muscle, obviously for respiration, but how it also is a big part of stabilization. So make it a great week. This is Two Anatomy Geeks. We'll see you next week here live on Facebook for Integrative Movement Systems. Thanks so much, take care.